Uh, hello, my fellow boxing enthusiasts. You suck presents, presents the smallest boxer of all time. Boxing's heavyweight division may have always been the biggest attraction of the great sport of boxing, the marquee of all divisions. Nothing gets ordinary folks involved more than having two giants battle it out in the ring for arguably the most prestigious title to hold in all of sports, boxing's heavyweight championship of the world. Look at the stare of the champion against the challenger. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Look at the size of the giant. But that doesn't mean that the greatest boxers of all time were all heavyweights. In fact, I would say that most of the boxers one could consider as being one of the greatest of all time are in fact not heavyweight boxers, but fighters of lower weight classes and lighter divisions. The little man with the biggest heart. That's four-time world champion Jacob Baby Jake Matlala. Most people when asked who is the greatest boxer of all time will say float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, Muhammad Ali. But you know you are truly great when THE Muhammad Ali says that you are the greatest boxer of all time. When they say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter pound for pound, meaning that I imagine if he was a heavyweight fighting the same style, he'd be the greatest. I would have to admit, I would have to say yes. I have his fight films, I've watched him, really. that man was beautiful, timing, speed, reflexes, rhythm, every body, everything was beautiful. I say I'm the greatest heavyweight of all times, but pound for pound, I still say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest of all time. Probably true, Sugar Ray Robinson was and still is to this day. To this day! The greatest boxer of all time. And yes, he was at his heaviest a middleweight contender and champion. Sadly, not much is known about his career, which brings me to the topic of this video here. Do you know who the smallest boxer of all time is? If you don't and you want a 10 minute boxing history lesson, then stick around to find out. You have my curiosity, now you have my attention. I will, I will catch you on the counterpunch, my fellow boxing enthusiasts. This guy's a freaking animal! I always tell it to him. One of my most loyal subscribers named Blue Deadpool has asked me in my comment section below of my Vitaly Klitschko documentary, the most underrated heavyweight of all time, to make a documentary on the smallest boxer of all time. So as you know, I make videos on requests, and let me know in the comment section below which boxer you would like me to make a documentary about, and with a little bit of luck, I will make that happen. Now straight to the point and back to the main topic of this video. The smallest boxer of all time was born on the 1st of August 1962 in Johannesburg, South Africa. His name was Jacob Matlala. Sadly, it's very difficult to find much information about his childhood and life before boxing because he was never considered a superstar due to him only being 4 foot 10 or 1 meter 47. He was an only child. His mother was a cook and his father was a cab driver. At only 10 years old, Jacob went to the gym for the first time ever with his father who boxed himself and he was hooked ever since. Jacob holding the title of the smallest boxer of all time probably goes hand in hand with all the odds stacked against him. Now here's a guy who was dealt the worst hand possible and made the most out of it. Little guy from Soweto, one of the poorest regions in the world. Nobody would have ever thought that he would become a professional fighter standing only 4 foot 10 and not possessing much power in either hand. Due to his stature, he received the nickname Baby Jake. You don't read anywhere and you don't hear anybody talk about Jacob's power or size in a good way, but something you will in fact hear people say when talking about Baby Jake is his true passion for the greatest sport ever. And this is the stuff that gives me goosebumps. Through his immense passion and will alone, he managed to climb the light flyweight rankings of the world. Internationally, not many people talk about or even know this man. But in Africa, even the late great Nelson Mandela used to joke that he didn't like being in the company of Jacob Matlala due to him receiving more attention and louder cheers when being out in public. Y'all get that? 
the freedom fighter himself, Nelson Mandela, spoke of this man. Oh, and on a side note, did you know that Nelson Mandela, in fact, boxed himself? Nelson Mandela fought for freedom and justice for all, a lifelong battle that was fueled, in part, by his love for boxing. Mandela was an amateur boxer in his younger days, and he credited the sport with helping instill discipline and the will to withstand the blows of hatred and a long imprisonment. Boxing great Muhammad Ali met Mandela several times. In a statement, Ali said Mandela was a man whose heart, soul, and spirit could not be contained or restrained by metal bars, economic injustices, or the burden of hate and revenge. And if you didn't know, and you are in fact surprised, then please subscribe. Subscribe. Because learning certain things about the history of boxing is something you will be receiving when watching my content. Thank you for your support. Rest in peace, Nelson Mandela. Jacob turned professional in 1979 at the age of 17. Now despite him having lost his first two professional fights and having kind of a rough start in the sport, after only his fourth bout he became junior flyweight South African champion. This guy was a big part of the history books. In his eighth fight he won the South African non-white flyweight title. Yes folks, you got that right. There used to be a non-white title and a white title. How messed up and wrong is that? Thank God we live in the 21st century. <laughs> Jacob Madlala had his first 19 fights in three years, which made him one of the most active and respectable boxers in South Africa. However, he only fought so many times because he just kept coming back again and again, always falling short on winning South African titles, but that's what his secret to success was. After losing, he just kept on coming back and suddenly, out of the blue, started collecting world titles. His first world title shot he got on the 7th of September 1991 against Dave McCauley in Belfast Island and it was for the IBF World Flyweight Championship. He lost by knockout in the 10th round, but on the 15th of May 1993 he got his second chance to fight for a world championship. He faced off against Pat Clinton in Glasgow for the WBO Flyweight Championship. He won by technical knockout in round number 8 and achieved his lifelong dream of becoming a world champion boxer. Baby Jake defended his title three times until losing it by stoppage in the eighth round against Alberto Jimenez on the 11th of February 1995. Against all odds, Jacob defeated Michael Carbajal on the 19th of July 1997 in Las Vegas for the IBA Flyweight World Championship and he later relinquished his title to be able to challenge Hawk Mike Pula for the vacant WBO Junior Flyweight Championship. I'm probably butchering these names of these past great boxes, but I'm sorry, pronunciation ain't my best attributee. Sadly, Madlala lost. For the second time in his career, he suffered two defeats in succession when his former sparring partner Peter Corshaw defeated him on points for the World Boxing Union WBU flyweight title. However, again in February 1999, Jacob claimed the vacant WBU World Flyweight Championship. Baby Jake ended his 30-year boxing career at Carnival City in Brackman by stopping Colombian Juan Herrera for the WBU Junior Flyweight title in the 7th round. In doing so, Jacob Baby Jake Madlala became the only South African boxer to have won 4 world championships in his career of 54 wins, 27 stoppages, 12 defeats and 2 draws. The ultimate honor bestowed on the boxer was the arrival of Nelson Mandela and Will Smith at ringside during his farewell fight. But Lala, after the fight, was so overwhelmed that he decided to present his WBU belt to Nelson Mandela himself. The great man Nelson Mandela was sitting and we, with uh, um, uh, Will Smith. Will Smith uh, was shooting a, a Muhammad Ali uh, film yeah. in, in Mozambique and he was there as a guest to Mandela. So they came to the fight and out of just sheer uh, human 
Mantala surprises as always. He jumped over and went over and um, handed his belt to Madiba. Following his career in the ring, Jacob worked as a businessman and motivational speaker and often took part in charity events to raise funds for the poor and those living with HIV. Sadly, my friends, Midlala died in 2013 at the age of 51. He will always be remembered for being the David in a boxing world of Goliath, the smallest world champion of all time. What touches me the most in stories like this is that he had all the odds stacked against him. Many would say he didn't have the gift of God and the physical stats to become a professional boxer, but what many also forget and don't see is that hard work, determination, and the belief in your fucking self is far more powerful than any talent or gift. Repetition is the mother of skill. Work hard for your dreams and never give up. If Matlala would have given up after he had a downfall, then he would not have even started to box. But by him overcoming adversity and him having kept on fighting again and again, he will forever be remembered as the smallest world champion boxer of all time. Rest in peace, legend. Jacob, baby Jake, Matlala. I hope you enjoyed this quick journey into the history of boxing and I hope to see you again in my next video, brother. I will get I will you get on you the counterpunch, counter my fellow boxing, boxing enthusiasts. So say goodnight to the bad guy. The last time you're gonna see a bad guy like this again.